Corey Sandhagen just showed levels against Marlon Chito Vera because he 50 40 5 him. It went down similarly to how I predicted. I thought that Marlon Vera was going to have some massive moments where he would drop Corey Sandhagen. But as I said, man, Sandhagen's got a sick chin and it held up in the fourth and the fifth round. Those were basically the only rounds where he took a couple of combinations. I think that Cheeto landed like maybe six or seven really hard shots in this entire fight, which really goes to show how good Corey Sanhagen is. I don't know how you guys scored the fight, but I had that 50-45. And the judge that scored it for Marlon Cheeto Vera should be burned at the stake, fired from the job. Just don't ever attend a UFC event ever again, please. Stay far away. That is one of the worst scorecards I've ever heard in my entire life. But let's just get right into it. Corey Sanhagen fought Cheeto Vera the way you're supposed to fight him. You're supposed to mix it up. You're supposed to make it an MMA fight. And you're supposed to be unorthodox. Perfect unorthodox style. Constantly mixing it up to the head, to the body. The way Corey was ripping to the body the whole fight was just beautiful. Always chopping at the legs, switching stances, lateral movement, just giving Cheeto so many looks. And on top of that, the wrestling, the takedowns. And I had this in my prediction. I said that Corey Sanhagen was going to go out there and shoot some takedowns to steal rounds. And that's exactly what he did. Midway through the first round, or I actually think it was within uh, a minute and a half of the first round, he shot a takedown, started landing some really good elbows on Chito Vera, and I was impressed with his ability to control Chito on the ground. Now, we saw Corey Sanhagen get a lot of his takedowns stuffed from Song Yudong, but Chito's been taken down throughout his career. He was taken down a bunch of times by Dominic Cruz, he was taken down by Frankie Edgar, and Corey Sanhagen actually had the most success with him on the ground because he landed like 30 elbows on him in the first round, Funny enough, Corey was the only one who got cut open in that sequence. I was still shocked at the fact that Cheeto Vera was just like unscathed, had a perfectly good normal face going out of that first round after getting hit with like 30, you know, slicer style elbows. But Corey Sanhagen did the same thing in the second round. Third round comes on. Cheeto's expecting the takedown and Corey Sanhagen just picks him apart at range snapping uppercuts, as I said, going to the body, chopping at the legs, beautiful performance from Corey Sanhagen, and Cheeto just was lost out there. He had never seen this much, this much looks in an MMA fight, and I think that Corey Sanhagen has leveled up. He is truly in his prime. Um, Cheeto, you know, he had a really good moment in the last 15 seconds of this fight where it looked like he was beating on Sanhagen a little bit, but nonetheless, man, that was it for him. I mean, he really got outclassed in this fight. And I said in my prediction video, Cheeto Vera is like a bantamweight Yoel Romero. Like, it doesn't matter how much damage you do to him. He's just not going to wear it. And you're not going to get him out of there. You're never going to knock him out. You're never going to wobble him. For goodness sakes, he doesn't even get cut open by 30, 40 elbows. And I said that Corey Sanhagen was a Robert Whitaker. He can wrestle. He can mix it up. And... The tenacity in which he throws his strikes is really meaningful because, again, those strikes are damaging, man. When Corey goes to your body, when he goes to the legs, when he lands a snapping uppercut, all of this is meant to really injure you, and it had an effect on Cheeto. Cheeto Vera actually slowed down a little bit towards the end of that fight. Um, Corey slowed down, too. It looked like his body language was beginning to fade a little bit. But either way, beautiful performance from Corey Sanhagen, and he called out Marab the Velashvili. Now, uh, I was in an amazing mood all the way up until that Marab callout. Um, just because I don't see anyone on this planet beating Marab right now in the Bantamweight division. The only chance someone has to beat Marab right now is if they are a guy who also has the best cardio in the UFC who can match Marab. And I have never seen anyone with the cardio Marab the Velocity. So that's out of the question because San Higgins slows down against Chito Vera who is already a guy that doesn't put on a, ha a high pace. And you're going to have to finish him in the first round or in the second round with like a crazy flying knee. Now, San Higgins the guy to do that because he's incredibly dangerous early on in his fights. We've seen it in his second round KO of Marlon Marais. We saw it against Frankie Edgar. He can knock you out early on with something wild. We saw him land a flush flying knee against TJ Dillashaw after stunning him with the right hand. He has the ability to do it, but... I mean, I can't bank on it. And Marab is tough as nails too, and he finds a way to get out of bad positions. So 
I don't like that call out because I actually am a massive fan of Sanhagen. And I've been saying it recently. Marab's kind of won me over a little bit, but like Sanhagen's the one guy I just don't want to see fight Marab. I would love Marab to go out there and destroy uh, Sean O'Malley because I feel like Sean O'Malley needs to get humbled. You know, he lost that fight versus Piotr Jan, but he's still deluded enough to think that he actually won. And anyone who thinks otherwise is a hater, which is just absurd. But Marab and Corey, Corey's like the last beacon of hope for us. He's like the last guy that we're all fans of that could potentially become a champion because he actually looked like a fucking champion in that fight. And he said going into it, he wanted to display a GSP-like skill set. That's what he's aiming for. He knows he has it with the striking. He knows he can do it all with the striking. Switching stances, unorthodox, the ability to hurt people, mixing it up all the time. But it's the wrestling that he's really been working on. And it paid dividends in this fight. So, again, he might be able to give Marab a couple of tough rounds with his wrestling, but that pace is just ridiculous. Again, Marab is not like the best pure wrestler. He's not the best striker. He's just a, a, a never-ending avalanche. And when you give that guy some decent skills, it's like, or that's just enough to ruin everyone. So I don't think that's a good fight for Sanhagen. I think Marab beats him, and Marab is like the uncrowned champ. I would much rather Sanhagen go out there and take on O'Malley, call O'Malley out, or just see you know what happens with um, Aljamain and... And Henry Cejudo. If Cejudo wins, you could take the Aljamain rematch. I feel like Corey Sanhagen could beat Aljamain S Sterling, right? I feel like if he doesn't get caught in a rear naked choke, he wins that fight every time. And maybe Henry Cejudo and Corey could fight down the line as well. Now, if Corey beats Marab, this guy is someone that I'm picking to become a champion, but I don't see it. Cheeto Vera should fight Piotr Jan. That's the first thing I thought of when Cheeto lost this fight. He got outclassed. He kind of got embarrassed. He got exposed as a guy that's been beating up on older fighters with weaker chins. He finally fought someone that is the true upper echelon of that bantamweight division. And I want to see him fight Piotr Jan. It's a fun fight on the feet. Both guys are slow starters. Piotr Jan is an even slower starter. And Marlon Vera can KO anyone in that division. And Piotr Jan is a guy that will stand in boxing range. Now, who do I think wins that fight? Piotr, Piotr Jan. Now, again... I know Piotr Jan was just like exposed against Marab for being a slow starter, but Marlon Vera is a slow starter too. He just got taken down rinse and repeat by Corey Sanhagen. Piotr Jan has really good offensive wrestling. I mean, he looked like a great grappler against Marab. It's just the pace at the end of the day. It's just a, a nightmare. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about, the pace of Marab. I think Piotr Jan goes out there, takes him down, and uh, beats him up in the later rounds with his boxing. You know, outboxes him, has really good head movement as well. These are the two matchups I want to see. I want to see Corey versus Aljamain Sterling if Sterling loses to Cejudo. I want to see Corey versus uh, a Sean O'Malley. I think that's a better fight. Run away from Marab the Velashley. I know Corey's, you know, feeling himself. I know he's got amazing skills. But again, the pace is like just unfair. It, it shouldn't even exist. He needs to be nerfed. He needs to be nerfed. And I don't think that I can bank on Sanhagen landing a flush flying knee like he did to Edgar. I can't pick that to happen. So I know Song Yudong and uh, Ricky Simone are fighting soon. That's a fight to keep your eyes out on. Uh, but like, yeah, I know you guys want Piotr Jan and, and Chido Vera. That would be an absolute banger. Both guys would be standing in the pocket trading. And we might see Piotr Jan get dropped in that fight for the first time as well. So actually, he's been dropped by John Dodson. But you know what I mean. Another fight I want to mention is Nate Landwehr choking out Austin Lingo in the second round really close fight he's gonna be a fucking star and we need to get behind him i'm about to follow him on instagram i don't know why i haven't followed him already uh the most african fighter in the ufc taking the crown from mike perry nate landwehr is hilarious man he said he uh got like a sucker punch rear naked choke i guess he punched austin lingo in the face before sinking in the choke that was really funny he actually knocked his mouthpiece out as well uh, but let's get behind this guy because he's on a three fight win streak. He's coming off of one of the best fights we've ever seen with, um, what's his name? Onama, David Onama. And he beat Ludovic Klein. I think that was a knockout as well. So we're going to see Nate Landwehr become a big star before our eyes. Let's get behind him now before it's too late. I don't want to see people getting behind him when he's taking on, you know, a Piotr Jan or something like this because he can't get that far in my opinion, but he looked amazing. 
Uh, one thing that I was really impressed with was his stomps to the knee. I guess Leon Edwards' knee strikes against Usman is really, you know, shining throughout the MMA world. Or maybe it's just John Jones fighting recently as well and people studying Jones. But he was going with the oblique kicks, side kicks to the knee. That really impressed me. And the guy is well-rounded. I believe he trains at MMA Masters. That's Colby Covington's gym. So he's got some really good underrated wrestling. Um, and entertaining as fuck on the mic, man. Like, one of the best fighters to make memes about. Uh, like, the most... Um, surprising voice you would ever imagine from a guy who looks like that from Tennessee. Let's get behind this guy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of tonight's fights. What did you think of Corey Sanhagen? Do you think that he should wait for Aljamain Sterling and Triple C to commence? Or do you think he should actually fight Marab? I don't. And what do you want to see Cheeto do next? Follow Nate Landware on Instagram. Let's get behind this guy because I want to see him blow up a little bit. And until next time. So you want to get in shape. Well, it wouldn't kill you to learn how to cook and you're not going to die just because you eat something tasty. You just have to take those same clean foods and you have to know what to do with them. Let me show you guys an example. Eggs, you've heard of those, right? Potato, white onion, and extra virgin olive oil. And with just four ingredients, I've made myself a delicious potato omelet. So you want to get in shape? You need to know how to cook with simple and healthy ingredients. For more meals like this one and comfort foods made with whole and unprocessed ingredients, check out my Real Food Cookbook.